So in this video I want to talk about a good research idea and specifically I want to define what a good research idea is. Because in the past I uh, talked about uh, developing a research title, I also talked about how to develop a good research topic. But here I just want to define what a good research topic means specifically. So in this video I'll talk about three characteristics that I believe are important and need to be there in order for this uh, research idea that you have to be worth investigating. The first characteristic that I want to talk about is that you have to be passionate about the topic or interested in it at the very least. Now, of course, this will depend on uh, which stage of career or education you are currently at. So, of course, it will be more difficult to be really passionate about the topic if you are a master's student, for example. So, uh, of course, you have much less time to uh, develop and conduct your research. You'll have less time to develop this real interest, uh, interest in a given topic. Uh, and then, of course, uh, and finally, if you're not uh, that passionate about the topic and you're a master's student, uh, it's not that hard because you're going to spend three or four or five months uh, doing your research. So, uh, so, of course, even if you're not uh, that passionate about this topic, you'll probably still manage. But even in this case, of course, it would help if you're at least interested in this topic. But then, if you are a PhD student, then I would say that it is absolutely crucial that you are, in fact, passionate about this topic. Because imagine you're going to spend three or five or sometimes uh, ten years uh, doing something, essentially, doing that uh, research, thinking about that research. So, uh, can you imagine how boring and frustrating it would be if you just uh, if you're not interested in that topic if you don't uh, genuinely want to find out the answers to your research questions this would be as I said extremely boring and difficult and, and to be honest I don't even think that it would be possible to complete this study uh, in my case I feel that the fact that I was extremely interested uh, in my topic I was extremely passionate about it uh, this resulted in, uh, in the success, uh, meaning that I was able to complete that study and that PhD. So es essentially I was thinking about that study quite a lot. So I was either working on that study or in my free time I was still thinking about that study because I just wanted to know, I wanted to find the answers to my questions. So, and again, as I said, I absolutely cannot imagine uh, doing that and being able to complete that PhD journey if, uh, if I wasn't interested in the topic. That would be, as I say, extremely boring and frustrating and difficult. Okay, so now before you get too excited about uh, this idea of investigating or conducting a study on your uh, favorite pet uh, or uh, your, your uh, dog or your rabbit or whatever that you are passionate about, uh, unfortunately uh, apart from uh, being passionate about a topic, you have to be sure that there is a need for that study. So um, I'm passionate about many things. I'm passionate about books, films, and sports, and uh, and playing FIFA on my on my PlayStation. But unfortunately, this doesn't mean that there anybody else uh, but me cares about it. So uh, this may sound obvious, but uh, it's not always. Uh, that clear and obvious. So you have to be sure that somebody will benefit from your study. There will be uh, some kind of practical use, ideally, uh, some implications. You're familiar, I'm sure, with this idea of implications, so uh, you have to talk about your implications and, and the implications chapter, but also throughout the whole uh, work. The, your implications have to be uh, clear throughout the whole uh, dissertation or uh, PhD study, so they have to be present in your uh, literature review and introduction and and essentially throughout uh, all the chapters. Sometimes when I supervise uh, students, master's students, 
uh, I would be reading their proposal or their initial version of dissertation and and uh, the problem I, I had was that I wasn't sure about the implications. So sometimes the idea sounded good in general or the topic was very interesting, but I really didn't know uh, why exactly we need this study. What is this study going to solve or who's going to uh, use the results of this study and for what, uh, for what purpose? So these are things that you have to consider from the very beginning. Sometimes you may not know exactly who is going to use your results, of course, but you have to consider uh, this idea and you have to start thinking about it very early. Sometimes it's a very uh, common sense and once you develop this research idea you pretty much know uh, the implications are there already or sometimes you start by thinking about the implications because you know that somebody needs something and then and then you develop the study. But sometimes you, you develop the study and you have to think uh, consciously and make effort uh, put effort into thinking about uh, who is going to benefit from that study and it's very good to think about it very early precisely because of what I already mentioned precisely because uh, these implications have to be clear and evident throughout the whole work and if you don't do it early even if you if your study makes it through uh, that proposal stage you are going to struggle later on because again, it's not implications are not just about writing this short section at the end. You have to know exactly who is going to need your study and you have to convincingly uh, demonstrate uh, that importance of your study. So to summarize again, make sure that your study is needed. And the third and final characteristic is that your study needs to be practical and doable. So you have to be sure that uh, it is possible to conduct this study and this involves uh, many different things many different aspects so for example uh, in terms of very practical and technical problems and aspects of uh, conducting a study you have to be sure that you have access to equipment for example that you will need so sometimes recording or audio recording equipment you will need to buy it or borrow it so uh, in either case you have to uh, plan this as well so how you're going what you're going to use in terms of uh, equipment, uh, software for data analysis or uh, or even facilities uh, for conducting interviews. Uh, then secondly, uh, in terms of your participants and your population or your sample, you have to be sure that you will gain access to this population. So sometimes you plan to interview people but they they get ill, they change their minds or whatever. So, so that's another aspect of uh, this study being doable. So you have to be sure that you'll have to, you'll have this access to your population. Then uh, there are so many other things. So even in terms of methods, in terms of the scope of your study and your research questions, for example. So if you're too ambitious and you're planning to investigate too much and, you know, solve the world's uh, problems with one study, uh, then quite often this turns out to be a problem as well. So, so uh, essentially it's always better to focus, uh, to have a narrow focus on a very specific thing rather than trying to solve too many uh, problems with one study. And uh, possibly there are many many other uh, things and many many other aspects of that uh, practicality but to summarize uh, this third characteristic uh, you have to be sure that it's just possible to conduct the study that you want to conduct.